Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather celebrating the Lord's love for us, we call to mind our sins, the obstacle to that love. We ask for forgiveness. Lord God, you sent your Son to teach us how to love each other and how to serve. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to bind up our wounds and to forgive our sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to gather all the nations of the world into the peace of his kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great? and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise the Lord who raises the poor from the dust. Praise the Lord who raises the poor from the dust. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed, both now and forevermore. Praise, Praise the Lord who raises the poor from the dust. High above all nations is the Lord above the heavens his glory. Who is like the Lord, our God, who dwells on high, who lowers himself to look down 
upon heaven and earth. Praise, Praise the Lord, who raises the poor from the dust. From the dust he lifts up the lowly. From the ash heap he raises the poor, to set them in the company of princes. Yes, with the princes of his people. Praise, Praise the Lord, who raises the poor from the dust. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life godly and respectful in every way. This is good, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires for all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and people, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all the testimony to which was given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the people should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Though Jesus Christ was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a steward, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the stewardship away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, but I'm ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do, so that people may receive me into their houses when I am put out of the stewardship. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, Take your bull, and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bull and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest steward for his prudence. For the sons of this world are wiser than their own generation than the sons of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal habitations. He who is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and he who is dishonest in a very little, he is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful, and the unrighteous mammon, who will entrust to you true riches? 
that you've not been faithful in that which is in others, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters. Rather, he will hate the one and love the other, or will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. This is the gospel of the Lord. For many Christians who wish to follow Christ and yet find themselves rich in material things, gospel teachings regarding money are troubling. At times it becomes so perplexing and troublesome that we are tempted to stop searching for a solution. It seems so hard, maybe even impossible, to integrate our desire for material security with full discipleship that we often give up trying to figure it out. Jesus and the gospel according to Luke tells us that we should not give up the effort. In the days of Jesus, it was common practice for managers to overcharge debtors and to keep this so-called commission for themselves. Jesus was not admiring the steward's dishonesty and unfaithfulness. He was admiring the man's efforts to solve his problems. Listeners would have known that the man was simply finding creative solutions to his difficulties. He was correcting the wrong he had done. He was seeking relationship and friendship, hoping to be welcomed later. This is the recommendation, not advice to deceive and manipulate, which is behind the story of the unjust steward. The steward musters every available bit of farsightedness and craft when it comes to sorting out his material fate. And really, he's only dealing with material things, with mere earthly things. We, however, are trying to figure out something which touches the very meaning of who we are and our ultimate destiny. Luke himself provides two guidelines to help us figure out our relationship to money. The whole of chapter 16, with its four interrelated sections, exemplifies the first guideline. Money is for persons, and the only proper use of it is in sharing. What's more, those who make a special claim on our sharing are the poor. This is an inescapable conclusion from Luke's teaching. It is a teaching with an ancient pedigree, the same doctrine that led Omus Amos to indict those who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. And just as Amos said that God would never forget the exploiting of workers for silver, dress, and drink, so also Luke warned of a dire fate for the rich man in the story of Lazarus. Luke's second guideline is that pithy moral drawn from the story of the steward. No servant can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or be attentive to the one and despise the other. You cannot give yourself to both God and to money. The more we allow ourselves to be mastered by money, or by possessions, the more we are likely to despise those who remind us of another dominion. In fact, we might even resent the very Gospels that challenge our attachments. 
the great commandment that Christ gave. To love God, and to love neighbor, should guide us in our relationship with material positions. We are to love and serve God, placing our call to discipleship above our possessions, above our prestige. Likewise, we are to love our neighbor, using the gifts we've been given for the benefit of the entire community, rather than only thinking of our own interests. And now, brothers and sisters, let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord Jesus presents our needs to God, and he protects those who dwell in him. Let us ask him to unite us in his peace as we pray in his name. That the leaders of the church will receive the Lord's guidance in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of governments and those in authority will imitate the Lord's love for justice in their words and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That victims of domestic and gang violence will enjoy the Lord's healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who worship in faith will live in the power of the Lord's truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will rejoice in the Lord's salvation in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with the Pope that the death penalty, which attacks the dignity of the human person, may be legally abolished in every country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, we raise our hands and hearts to you in fervent prayer. In your love, guide us from every danger and grant us your salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. This is God's The mingling of this water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and with himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. This is God
pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices of your hands for the praise and glory of Christ's name, for our good and for all of us, Holy Church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exult and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and to be glorified who loves the human race, and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And as he once did for the disciples, so he now does for us. He opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. And giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this, this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis our Pope, with Botitlachale our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you've made your own. 
open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, just as Christ did and as he commands us to do. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep on the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our own earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, with St. Ignatius of Loyola, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who it is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, Keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the for kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. Let's share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life. But only say the word, and our souls shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. 
Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, raise up those who renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace, the love, and the joy of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God.